Honey. Yes. No, not you. Honey, it's all the buzz. Have you heard that honey never goes bad? Scientists have found preserved pots of honey in Egyptian tombs, thousands of years old and still fresh enough to eat. I'm not sure why someone would do that, but it's nice to know we have the option. Hi, I'm Miranda Cosgrove. Welcome to the STEM Loft, where the landlord said it wasn't haunted and was honestly really weird about it. There are other foods with a similar chemical structure, but only honey earns the title of the food that never spoils. Why? In its natural form, honey has minimal levels of water and very few organisms or bacteria can survive in an environment like that. They'd basically suffocate. So it's very difficult for bacteria to enjoy honey. It's probably one of the worst things about being bacteria, that and not having a brain. Honey is also relatively acidic with a pH between three and 4.5. For reference, pure water has a pH of seven. So why is honey's chemical makeup so special and seemingly everlasting while other foods fall short? Bees. The whole process starts when the worker bees venture out of the hive to collect nectar from local flowers. All bees involved in honey production are female, by the way. Just saying. Some bees fly up to three miles and visit up to 100 flowers per trip in search of nectar. Once they've honed in on their target flower, a honeybee will use her long straw-like tongue called a proboscis to absorb the nectar droplets. When bees extract nectar from flowers, that nectar actually does contain a lot of water, around 60 to 80%. But by the time that nectar enters a bee's stomach, an enzyme called glucose oxidase begins to break it down from the complex sugars to more simple sugars. This process is called inversion and makes it so the nectar is less prone to crystallization. Once the worker bee returns to its colony back at the hive, it passes the nectar to a house bee who will pack it away into hexagon-shaped beeswax honey cells. The glucose oxidase enzyme mixes with the nectar and breaks it down into gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide. Yes, that same hydrogen peroxide in your first aid kit. So basically, bees are tiny little flying chemistry labs. And they're cute. The perfect animal. To complete the process and turn the nectar into honey, the house bee flaps its wings towards a cell full of regurgitated nectar, creating a warm wind to dry it out. Once it's dried out, voila, we have honey. Honey has been used in medicinal remedies for centuries. The earliest recorded use of medicinal honey was found in Sumerian clay tablets, dated as early as 1900 BC, which listed honey as a main ingredient in 30% of their prescriptions. The ancient Egyptians also turned to honey in times of need, commonly used as an ointment to treat diseases of the skin or eyes. Honey was pretty much the bandage of ancient times, drawing moisture out of wounds so they don't get infected, while at the same time letting off a small amount of hydrogen peroxide. Speaking of drawing out moisture, that's the last piece of the puzzle to honey's long shelf life. Honey needs to be properly sealed to stay fresh. Otherwise, it will suck in moisture, and moisture equals contaminated honey. Remember the thousand-year-old honey found in those Egyptian tombs? They stayed fresh because they were properly sealed. So if you want to keep your honey fresh, store it in a dry place. So if you're a bee watching this, thank you for all your hard work, and congratulations on making honey an almost everlasting food. Hey, it's Miranda Cosgrove, your favorite host of Mission Unstoppable. I'm the only host. And if you wanna watch awesome STEM videos and exclusive Mission Unstoppable clips, just make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell.